I am a paleontologist. I have a profound interest in the incredible, awe-inspiring story of life on planet Earth. I'm particularly interested in a slice of time we sometimes refer to as the age of dinosaurs. Now, if I ask you to name a dinosaur, I know that about 90% of you are going to say T-Rex, <laughs> Tyrannosaurus rex, a giant predator with bone-crunching jaws. It is the most famous dinosaur. And it is one of the most famous animals. It's not the only famous dinosaur. Here's another animal you're probably familiar with. This is Triceratops, the three-horned face, a contemporary of T-Rex. And you often see these two animals locked in mortal combat in children's book and movies. Here's another dinosaur you're probably familiar with. This one lived a long, long time before T-Rex. It lived about 80, well, actually more than 80 million years before T-Rex. That really gives you an idea of how successful dinosaurs were. They were around for a very long time. T-Rex lived about 67 million years ago. So T-Rex is closer in time to us than it is to this other type of dinosaur. This dinosaur is an armored animal. It's called Stegosaurus. It has giant bony plates on its back and spikes on its tail. Now, the three dinosaurs I just showed you look very different. They are very different. But they share one very important thing in common. All three are North American dinosaurs. And it turns out that much of what we know about dinosaurs and the world they lived in is based on North American discoveries of fossil plants and animals. And that's why most of the famous dinosaurs are North American dinosaurs. We do have contributions from other parts of the world, like Europe, where the very first dinosaurs were named, South America, where the largest dinosaurs were unearthed, and Asia, especially China. China has revealed a veritable um, treasure trove of fossils, especially early birds and feathered dinosaurs. So these Asian fossils have confirmed that birds are descendants of small predatory dinosaurs. They are surviving dinosaurs. And these Asian fossils tell us that feathers first evolved in dinosaurs. So contributions from other parts of the world can be very important. Now today I'm not going to talk about Asia or North America or Europe. Today I'm going to talk about paleontology's forgotten continent. The second largest landmass on Earth, Africa. Africa is severely underrepresented in paleontology. It is lagging far behind all the other land masses. Let me just give you one example. We're just talking about birds from the age of dinosaurs. We have over 120 different species of birds from the age of dinosaurs from all the major continents except mainland Africa. So Africa really is lagging far behind. And that's a big problem. And we see this over and over again when we look at other groups of fossil vertebrates. So why is that a big problem? Well, it means that our global reconstructions of the history of life are flawed. They're biased. They're missing some very important data. And of course, this state of affairs also raises a number of questions. Are ancient paleo ecosystems in Africa similar to the ones we know from North America and Europe, or are they different? Well, maybe we will never find an answer to these questions. Maybe it's just very difficult to find dinosaur age fossils in 
Africa. Maybe rocks of the right age are not exposed in Africa. Well, I can tell you that that is not the case. There are a handful of fossil sites on the African continent, and some of them have yielded spectacular fossils. They're just not very widely known. So I'll introduce you to two of them. This is the first one. This is the landlocked country of Niger on the southern edge of the Sahara Desert. In colonial times, French scientists described the very first fossils from this country. But it wasn't until the 1960s that a pioneering French paleontologist, Philippe Taquet, described a dinosaur graveyard in Niger in a place called Gadoufawa, which apparently means the place where camels fear to tread. And if you go to Gadoufawa on a good day, you can find several dinosaur skeletons just weathering out of the ground. It really is a dinosaur graveyard. And the objects you see there sitting on the sand dune, these are dinosaur vertebrae. So over the next few decades, researchers from other parts of the world travel to Niger to collect fossils there. Uh, researchers from uh, the UK, Germany, Spain, the United States, and they all made important discoveries there. Not just bones and teeth, but also things like footprints. These are footprints of a giant plant-eating dinosaur in Niger. If you look at the larger one, you can even see claw marks, beautifully preserved footprint. So dinosaurs have definitely left a mark on the African continent, and we can collect their fossils there. Some of the most spectacular African fossils come from Eastern Africa, from a place called Tendaguru in Tanzania. Now, over 100 years ago, Tanzania was part of German East Africa. So again, colonial times, and German researchers brought about 250 tons of dinosaur bones from Tendaguru all the way to Berlin, Germany. And this here is one of their key finds. This is the skull of a plant-eating dinosaur. It's about this long, which is fairly large, but not gigantic by dinosaur standards. But what you probably don't know is that this skull sits atop the tallest mounted dinosaur skeleton in the world. So that's something you probably didn't know. The tallest mounted dinosaur skeleton in the world is that of an African dinosaur, Giraffa Titan, sometimes also known as Brachiosaurus bronchi. So when I was a child, I visited this very museum in my hometown of Berlin, and I looked at these towering skeletons, and I was blown away. So I grew up with African dinosaurs, but I knew that that was very unusual. I was aware of the fact that much of what we know about dinosaurs is based on discoveries from other parts of the world. So I decided to go to Africa and explore the continent in search of fossils one day. And that's what I've been doing over the last decade or so. I decided to scour the shifting sands of North Africa's Sahara Desert in search of fossils. It's a difficult place to work in. You have to cope with extreme temperatures, uh, sandstorms. Sometimes you even experience flooding in the desert. So those are challenges you face in different parts of the African continent. In some areas, you also have to deal with political instability, and the extreme remoteness of some dig sites. So all of those factors contribute to the under-representation of Africa in paleontology. But it was worth the extra effort. Over the last few years, my expedition teams have uncovered thousands of fossils in 100 million year old rocks in the Sahara. A hundred million years ago, the Sahara was not a dry desert. It was a giant river system. And it was home to giant fish, like this 
car-sized coelacanth. We also found out that the Sahara, 100 million years ago, was home to a bewildering diversity of fearsome predators, crocodile-like hunters and giant predatory dinosaurs. And that's something we don't see anywhere else in the world. If we look at the ancient ecosystem T-Rex lived in, for example, well, in the world of T-Rex, it's very lonely at the top of the food chain. T-Rex is the only giant predator in its ancient world. But here in the Sahara, we have several T-Rex-sized predatory dinosaurs living side by side. We have big predatory fish, we have crocodile-like hunters. We think that most of the predators in this possibly unique fossil assemblage were fish eaters. They are feeding on things like this giant sawfish here. We even found remains of a giant 50-foot-long fish-eating dinosaur with crocodile-like jaws. So as you can see, Africa can make very important contributions to paleontology. And the continent is full of incredible fossil assemblages with bizarre creatures living in them. Right now, we're very busy collecting fossils of groups that are particularly poorly represented in the African fossil record, not just dinosaurs, but also other groups like pterosaurs. This is a pterosaur. It's not a bat or a bird. It's not a dinosaur. It's a flying reptile. Some of these flying reptiles include the largest flying creatures ever to evolve. So just to tell you how bad our fossil record in Africa is, just a few years ago, you could put all of Africa's terrestrial fossils on a small table. But over the last few years, we have collected hundreds of additional specimens. So we now have a much better understanding of the anatomy and diversity of African pterosaurs and their contribution to the global evolutionary history of these flying reptiles. So we have a lot of really exciting science projects. But there is another dimension to my work. Africa is lagging behind, not just in terms of scientific discoveries. Africa is also lagging behind in terms of scientific infrastructure. There are very few museums, very few research collections. And sadly, the vast majority of Africa's incredible fossil treasures are deposited in museums and universities in Europe, the United States, Japan. Another problem is that many people in Africa and beyond are completely unaware of the continent's incredible ancient past. So I'm trying to change that. I'm working with people all around the world, people from many different backgrounds, I'm working with artists, like my Italian colleague Davide Bonadonna, who helps me through his artwork resurrect these dragons from Africa's deep time. He brings them back to life. I also work with exhibit specialists. This is an exhibit I worked on. It's a traveling exhibit. It's in Europe right now. It's traveling around the world, and it features several spectacular African dinosaurs. So this exhibit is a, an ambassador for African science and exploration. I also work very closely with African scientists. This is something that our colonial era predecessors did not often do. All the fossils I have collected in Africa are also in an African research collection. I established a new collection in Morocco. So that's where all of my fossils are deposited. And I'm happy to report that similar efforts are underway in other parts of the continent. This here is my Pittsburgh-based colleague and friend, Matt Lamana from Carnegie's Museum of Natural History. And he's excavating a giant upper arm bone of a plant-eating dinosaur in Egypt. And in the last few years, spectacular new discoveries have come out of places like Kenya, South Africa, Angola. 
So we are still at the beginning, but Africa is producing more and more spectacular fossil discoveries. And perhaps most importantly, African scientists are playing an increasingly important role in this process. This here is in an Egyptian paleontology team. It's led by Hisham Salam, an Egyptian paleontologist with Mansoura University. So this is a new generation of African scientists and explorers. And they're just getting started, but they're already rewriting the paleontology textbooks with their incredible discoveries. So over the next few years, I'm going to continue my work in Africa, working alongside these African trailblazing scientists. And we are going to continue to unearth, protect, and highlight the continent's incredible ancient past. We're going to create new research collections in Africa. We're going to inspire young people all across the continent to care about science and exploration. And we are going to make sure that Africa is no longer considered paleontology's forgotten continent. Thank you.